This is my town! If you live to see the dawn, it's because I allow it. I decide who lives or who dies. In a town called Redemption, death is a way of life. Some fight for money. Some fight for glory. But one stranger has come here, looking for something else. I now declare the quick draw competition open. Anybody can challenge anybody. Sign me up. Sure must want to die young, miss. She can play their game. Want to play poker with me, little lady? Looks like you're having a pretty good time playing with yourself. She can beat their odds. Did you ever kill anyone? Sure. I don't think you have. But there's one thing she can't do. Why are you really here? You're no gunfighter. Forget the past. Daddy! String him up! Put him on a chair! Some people deserve to die. TriStar Pictures presents Sharon Stone. I'm gonna kill you if I have to ride all the way to hell to do it. Gene Hackman. There's nothing on this earth that frightens me now. Nothing. Leonardo DiCaprio. Hey, my face. In a film by Sam Raimi. The Quick and the Dead. In this town, you're either one or the other. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and this is my town. If you live to see the dawn, it's because I allow it. I'm in charge of everything. I decide who lives and who dies. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister, the co-host of Dorking Out. I have decided that you can live, Margot D. You just dropped out. Oh, no. <laughs> Should we start all over? You said, I have decided. No, no. I love this, actually. So you said, I have decided, and then it was total silence. Ah! On the what did you decide? I decided that you get to live. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I don't have anything pithy to say from the script. I do have to say, like Sharon Stone, whatever th- every reviewer was probably writing at the time, she should smile more. <laughs> if she would smile more, none of this would have happened. <laughs> Why isn't she smiling? We are talking. She looks kind of grumpy, grumpy. She's, she's so grumpy. I wonder why. <laughs> we are dorking out about 1995's The Quick and the Dead. It is directed by Sam Raimi and it's written by Sam Simon Moore and it stars Sharon Stone as the lady. Uh, Gene Hackman. Lady. Lady. Hey, hey ladies. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Gene Hackman, Russell Crowe, Leonardo DiCaprio oh. is in there. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, like, I know this movie didn't do well at the box office. I know it got mixed reviews. I super love this movie. I saw it in the theater and super loved it. Did you see it in the theater, Margot? No, I did not see it in the theater. I This was when I was packing to move to New York. I realized, like, February, March, 95, I was, like, selling my car yeah, and all yeah. my shit. So... Did you, is this a first time watch? No, I have seen okay. it. Okay, good. Um, I had a big old crush on Russell Crowe, like pretty early. Okay. We were saying off the air, <laughs> he plays a priest. And I say he's another father what a waste because <laughs> oh, he's so hot. This was his first American movie. I think Virtuosity came out after this. So this was the first. So this was my introduction to Russell Crowe. And I was like, oh, hello. Who's that now? (laughs) I'm converted. (laughs) Neil. (laughs) He's so he's so handsome. And also, I will say, and I know this is a very unpopular take. 
this is my favorite Leonardo DiCaprio performance. <laughs> oh God, no, yeah, no, no, no. This is my okay. favorite. We could, I'll, we could disagree. Yes, we'll still be friends. Yes, I love it. But if you haven't seen this movie, it's streaming on the Criterion Channel. So you sh- first of all get the Criterion Channel. It's amazing. Absolutely not we, sponsored. We get nothing from them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not yeah. sponsored. Just. They're legit. They have awesome shit all the time. And that's where I saw it pop up. And I was like, oh, we have to talk about that. So the movie opens with like Sharon Stone's character, the lady. Hey, lady. Like lady. rolls into the town redemption as all Western towns always have those kinds of names. She rolls into redemption and it is run by Gene Hackman. And Gene Hackman is very scary and very evil and he just he's one of those dicks who just fucking runs the town he gets like 50 percent for every dollar they make and he like has this huge mansion at the edge of town and he just lords over everybody and she is in the town they have like a gunslinging competition where apparently gene hackman wins every year because he is still alive so they do it every year and people sign up and then like what it's like every hour basically people like have a quick draw contest and the winner gets a shit ton of money that's that's it <laughs> that's all i understand of this movie i haven't seen it in a long time um it's uh he's like the elon musk totally <laughs> he totally is He's just a very arrogant guy with a lot of wealth and a lot of yes men around them who are willing to die, you know, you know, the other circumstances in order for him to keep going. I love me some Gene Hackman. That's like that's the selling point for me. I mean, I super love Sharon Stone. I think she's an amazing movie star and a great actress. Yes. But, uh, you know, Hackman would be the draw for me initially. Yes. And uh, I think he delivers. It's it's some cheesy dialogue for sure. For sure. For but sure. Sam Raimi movies are fun, man. They're so fun. They're super entertaining. Gene Hackman is like he's chewing on all the scenery in this movie. <laughs> and I like it. Like that's it's one of the things I love about the movie is it's really over the top. Like the camera is just zooming all over the place. It's doing all the stuff you expect from early Sam Raimi movies, uh, zooming in on eyes and like blowing holes in people. And then you see the sun through the hole in their chest or in their head, which is you what know. it should always be. If I'm going to give me a gunfight. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a weird thing because guns in America have become like a, a number one way people die. I mean, yes. I don't. It is the number one killer of children in this country now. I yeah, just read so this. it's 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 so there's parts of that that are really upsetting. It's like this American myth of pull yourself up by your bootstraps and yes. shoot the shit out of people, and then you'll get what you want out of life. And it's like, well, there's lots of things that leave people out of that equation. Yeah, but we're talking 1995. Sharon Stone, super hot. Yeah, I don't think she's done Casino yet. I don't think so. No, I think that was later. This was her like one of her producing yeah. gigs. Yeah, she had she, all the say in this movie. She had all the say, and I have to say, also, I was like, this this wardrobe, I want to wear everything that people are wearing. I'm the rock chick, so like to me, this is all appealing. <laughs> and then I realized it was Patricia Von Bredenston, who is from Arizona, by the way, they shot this in Arizona. She's the woman that made all the costuming for Saturday Night Fever, including the white suit. Oh, my suit. God! And she did, for, she won an Oscar for her work in Amadeus because I was like, this movie looks great. And these yes. fashions and these clothes and everything seems spot on. Yes. And then I looked and I was like, ah, I've interviewed this person. So uh, it gets my seal of approval. There you and go. And I want those pants that apparently she couldn't, Sharon Stone could not sit in those <laughs> pants. Those, I want them. <laughs> they look hot. They look and like I, you'd be on the subway yes. and then like a half an hour you're like, oh God, I'm going to. My, my cooch is on fire. Yeah. This is not going to work. When I say they look hot, I mean that both ways. Like, she yeah. looks hot in them, and they look really hot. Like, like I would be sweaty. I would be Spanx. sweaty. <laughs> like the first time you were Spanx, you're like, why is there a hole in this thing? Like, oh, I get it. Oh. Not just to pee. It's just like. <laughs> it's ventilation. 
this is this is suffocating my peach. Yes. There uh You didn't think we'd mention our peach in this episode, <laughs> did you? I knew we would. <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> listeners were prepared for that. I mean, we kind of mention it like every episode. It's whether or not it makes the cut. Just kidding. We never cut anything. Like we cut the show. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> the ads come out of nowhere and are really loud. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sounds right. This is our fun show. So I let lo- all the like cast of characters roll into town for this this thing. So we get Lance Hendrickson. Oh. playing like a guy what's his name's like ace or something and he's like he's very like he's ridiculous he's like i have a deck and you know i have an ace in this deck for every man i killed and he like opens it up and it's like all aces like i get it okay and just i love sharon stone's reaction to all the men that come into town so she's you know he's like, gonna play cards with me looks like you're having fun playing with yourself <laughs> you know or like or the gross guy with the scars, and he's like, "I need a drink. You need a bath. Like, <laughs> you burnt, you burnt scars. You burnt." She's doing Clint Eastwood, For which sure. is like all those spaghetti westerns, which is what they don't want women to do. But that's why I like it because yes. she doesn't force a smile. She doesn't laugh at their dumb jokes. Like if, you know, she'll react the way she feels yeah. authentic and Leonardo DiCaprio, who we make fun of all the time for dating women. Yes. Like only under 25 and look at how old he is and how young his girlfriends are. He's a, a tadpole. He is so He's, babyish. Yeah, he is. He is so young. In this movie, I think he's adorable. Everybody drink, absolutely. And I but think I, I have a I have a matronly attitude or an aunt attitude when I'm around him. Like I just want to put my arms around him and protect him. Yeah, he. The reason this is my favorite, and again, is it his best? Oh no, I don't. I'm sure it's not his best. It's my favorite because it's he's Leonardo DiCaprio is a really handsome man who can be very charming when he wants to and he usually plays fucking bummers he plays the big fucking bummers in movies like he's not a laugh riot in the departed you know like i, I love the departed no though. we love we both love the depart i love the departed too and he's really good in those movies i guess when i say my favorite i mean like this is the most fun like he's he's fun I'm okay with him running around the titanic though like helping Rose in every situation. True. I just, I think <laughs> so. That, I think that's my favorite, but I get it because he's yeah. so sprightly yes. and young and, you know, just full of life. Yes. His, he just like, like I said, I want to pinch his cheeks and cook him some pasta yes. and tell him the world's going to be okay. Yeah. And, and he's th- arrogant, but like not, not in a gross way that we'll see later in like something like Wolf of Wall Street or something like Ugh, which I can't watch. Yeah, he, you know, it's just like, how do you improve perfection? Damn, I'm so fat. Like he's just like cocky young guy, and I think it's it's just super fun to watch. Like I don't, yeah. he doesn't play parts like that anymore. Maybe he's too no, old, but whatever. And apparently, they wanted to get Matt Damon. Matt yeah. Damon. Matt Damon. But they couldn't. And he said no. So they had. So Sharon Stone apparently yeah. knew about this kid and how, and his talent and knew that. And so she she was a producer on the film. So she said she paid out of her own money. Yeah. And I and I get it. I mean, he I get it. He's yes. Super. You're right. He's super energetic. Yeah. He's He's very light. This movie is very heavy. Yes. And no one's cracking wise. No one is having a fun time. But he There's is. No, for most There's of the no movie. There's no Warren going yes. on or whatever, but except for him, like when he shows up. So I get it. Yeah. And he, th- I think this is one year before Romeo and Juliet, which mm-hmm. like, and then it was like all over for like, he was on a different path at that point. Like, and then he like kind of was like, I don't want to be the heartthrob and I want to do serious things. And good for him, by the way. He's chosen very yeah. wisely in his career. Obvious understatement. Like, he's. Ugh. He's Leo's going by his own rules. Yes. He's doing what he wants. And I respect that. Yes. Actually. Yeah. Same. Like he he could have gone the teen heartthrob route, 
and he chose he, not to and he works with he like he could be on his like third or fourth marriage <laughs> he could be like the father of like several kids he doesn't pay attention to yes or he's gonna be like i like acting i like being sexy on movies or i like just being i like being on movie sets and i like being, being around creative people and that's what i'm gonna do yeah i say good on you okay yeah. Yeah, it by the way, not our favorite thing that he continues to date women who are way too young for him. But that's what yeah, yeah, we have thoughts about that. But that's for the other show. <laughs> that's the other show. Yes. Yeah. So people in the town are obviously they fucking hate Gene Hackman's character. They hate him. He's a he's a fucking monster. They have paid somebody like a gunman to like enter the contest to try to kill him. We catch that point. It's they, they show that a scene of that at some point. And we also get Gene Hackman's like cronies drag Russell Crowe in from whatever small town he is now a priest in. He, it turns out he used to run with Gene Hackman and his gang, but he's reformed. He, he, wants to repent he feels bad about what he's done he's a priest now what a waste (laughs) like exactly father what a waste yes and there's a whole thing where like they're hanging him they're gonna hang him on a chair and like shoot it out and one of the things i love about sharon stone in this movie is she is doing like the clint eastwood like stoic woman of few words thing but also when gene hackman is around she does look really terrified like she's afraid of him for he's good scary. reason because he's really yeah. scary. He's a great actor. We've talked about him in other episodes. He's like six two or six yeah. three. He has he's somebody who apparently suffers no bullshit on a set. Like he yeah. knows what he wants, knows what he's going to do, and he does it. Yes. And he's in his sixties when he's doing this, right? I mean, I can't yeah. do math. He's in his nineties now, right? But he, yeah, he he's a big time fucking movie star, yes. and he knows what he wants, and he's like playing a badass. And yeah, it is terrifying to watch him, and I don't know how you would play it any other way. Yeah, I mean, she, the character needs to be afraid of him. It's almost like she regresses to like little girl when he's a real little girl Mary Cosby now (laughs) little girl girl. move along bobblehead (laughs) (laughs) that's her real housewife Salt Lake City by the way yeah we'll be talking about that later uh her demeanor completely changes when Hackman is around because he's you know for obvious reasons he terrifies her like it turns out that like he rode into the town when she was, her father was Gary Sinise, was Lieutenant Dan. Yep. This <laughs> and is a big year for Sinise. It was. And mm-hmm. she, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gene Hackman's gang, like, rounds him up and, like, hangs him from a tree and, like, tells her that she can shoot him down and gives her the gun. <laughs> the scene is fucked up. There are some fucked up scenes in this movie. Yes. that, But I... I I defend it now because it should be fucked up. It should be fucked up to like, you should normalize yes. this behavior. And I think it was, I think there was a lot of this shit going on and that people romanticized later yes. on. And she's, she's the collateral damage of her father being executed yes. or sent. To, well, we find out she's, the, he's, you know, they, the, also the tropes of like hanging him and all yes. of that is like really upsetting, but that's a part of our history and yeah. it happened to all kinds of people and it was all in the guise of manifest destiny here in America like move on west young man and and take what you want take what you want kill what gets in your way yep they hand in the in the flashbacks we see that like not only did this gang like beat the shit out of her dad and like hang him up um and they hand her a gun to like shoot him down she is just a kid she's just a little kid and she ends up killing her own father like it is awful awful and it's not her fault she's just a little kid and like obviously she wants revenge and that is like so many westerns like the story is the same of so many westerns it's revenge and you know the town being called redemption it's like very on the nose but it's supposed to be 
And I just, I like this movie so much. I think it's the yeah. like, one of the most entertaining Westerns. It's like one of my favorites. Again, is it the best Western ever made? Absolutely not. Would I watch it over most other Westerns? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Like, yeah, the stakes seem pretty intense. I mean, yeah. there's an there's basically an execution happening every day, like yes. on the hour. Yes. So they all like so we have Keith David. We have like all kinds of great actors. Yes. But you, you know, you get to and it's the same thing. Like you get to like somebody and then they're shot between the eyes yeah. or whatever and they die. Yeah. And it's over and over again, which is repetitive. But it's like. Yeah, that's what happened in a lot of these towns. And it's what happens in America all the time. Yes. Like, wake up. Yes. they. So they introduce, like, a colorful cast of characters, most of them garbage people. Um, one of my favorites is the... So they, they've now hauled in Russell Crowe, who's, like, vowed, like, I'm, I'm not fighting. I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Um, they give him a gun and all this stuff. But, like... He's not going to do it, he says. And like immediately some dude walks up and is like, I challenge you. Like, and I was like, what a fucking prick to be. First of all, the guy like can't wait to ch like challenge a preach, a preacher to a fucking duel. And then he knows he's not going to fight back. So he's just like, I'm just looking to like murder this priest. And then all of his kids are like, ah, daddy's going to kill you, preacher. Yeah. And they start like throwing things at him. I'm like, what a fucking prick. And of course, Russell Crowe, it's almost like muscle memory. He can't help himself. Like the minute the man draws on him, Russell Crowe draws and kills him and all the kids get to watch his dad die. So cool. Yeah, fun. <laughs> Good times. We get like a Swedish guy, you know, the show. He's like, I'm the fastest in Sweden. And he's like instantly killed by the kid. Um, it's so My people time. will make Ikea, though, so it'll be okay. <laughs> It's it's so fucked up. I don't know if that's Danish or Swedish. I don't. I, I think I, it's Swedish. I think, I think you're right. I think you're like right. Norwegian countries. I get mixed up. There's a lot of scenes of Gene Hackman just like taunting Russell Crowe. Like he wants to corrupt him. It's like it's offensive to him that Russell Crowe has chosen a repentant path. It's. I think those scenes are really terrific. Like. They're both mm -hmm. just really powerful actors. And um, yeah, I mean, they're elevating the material. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I think everybody in this movie is doing that. There's, mm -hmm. you know, um, all the stuff with like Russell Crowe getting the gun at Leonardo at the kids uh, gun shop and like the way he's like holding the gun and spinning it like so good so good they're all really good with their guns yeah no they're all great actors i have to say that like they're amazing actors and it looks great i yeah. mean cinematography is amazing uh for me it just got a little repetitive with yeah. the gun fights it was a there's a just like it was just a bridge too far there was just like too many people i like that got shot between the eyes that i'm like yeah okay i get it <laughs> yeah that's valid we also get a scene where uh, Gene Hackman invites Sharon Stone to dinner and she pulls out her nice dress and, you know, washes her hair and um, shows up at his house. And it's it's just so gross. He's like, I find myself uncontrollably attracted to you. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> so, bleh, uh, you know, and she's like in her face, like she could barely hide the like, ew gross and he i i wanted i wrote in here he basically asks her to be his whore i'm all not basically he does he asks her to be his whore and he's like i'll give you all the money you want if you'll sleep with me and she's like hard pass and she's really scared of him she like runs out of the tries to run out of the room basically um then what happens oh then the kid challenges gene hackman to a, the contest and the kid is Leonardo DiCaprio's character is supposed to be Gene Hackman's son or is he or is he that's the whole thing I I think he is but um it's kind of fucked up and like Gene Hackman's telling him like you should back out um 
but he refuses. You might really, really lose. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're really going to lose. And, you know, he he wants his dad's respect. He's like, and of course, like, they first of all, they have made the kid like super likable. It seems like everyone in the town really likes him. He literally gets married right before the duel. <laughs> like, it's like, I'm going to live forever. And here's my wife. And, you know, it's all this stuff. And I'm the king of the world. I'm the he's the king of the world. And you know, he he shoots him. He kills his own son and like it's so sad when he's dying. Like he's crying. He's saying I don't want to die. He's reaching out for Gene Hackman to take his hand and he like won't do it cuz he's such a fucking prick. It's really fucked up. It's like there's some dark shit in this movie. Yeah, there's a lot of dark shit in this movie. Yes. That's my point. Yes. It could have used a little more levity for me. That's true. I could see that. We also get our old friend Robert's Blossom shows up. I love me some Blossom. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, I think this was his last movie. And he's like the, I guess, coroner or whatever they call them. Call the- he, um, oh, hold on. I think I'm having microphone. Is it working? Can you yeah, hear me? Yes, okay. working now. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my mic lately. Um, they, oh, they make it clear that he knows who she is, that she is Ellen. She is the daughter of Gary Sinise. And they start, then they recruit Russell Crowe's character and they're going to like work together to kill Gene Hackman. And there's a whole thing where like her and him like, I'm sorry, her and him, like y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the lady and the preacher have a gun battle because it's the, they have to fight each other and they make it look like she died, but she didn't really die. And when the preacher goes to fight Gene Hackman, they blow up a bunch of shit and she shows up and kills Gene Hackman in a very dramatic way. Like, you know, first shoots a hole in him and we get to see the sun like coming through him because that's so Sam Raimi. And then she right. like shoots That's a, a Raimi. Ra- shoots him <laughs> shoots him again. Uh, and it like goes through his eye, you know, it's very dramatic. Um and then she throws the star at Russell Crowe and is like, the law's back in town. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's, it's very, very western, basically. Um I just really like this movie. I think it's it is dark in spots. I could it would be nice probably if there was a little bit more levity, but I think it's really entertaining. It's an hour 45 minutes. I think it moves pretty fast. Um I heard there was a love scene that was cut. That feels appropriate. I don't know why there would have been a love scene between Sharon Stone and Russell Crowe. Um uh because they're Sharon Stone and Russell Crowe. <laughs> valid. <laughs> You're, you you know what? I take me? it back. I take it back. Are you kidding me? What do they Restore the though? scene. Restore you, the scene. You cowards. Release you cow- that scene. Release the love scene cut. <laughs> They're at their hottest. Are you kidding you me? You know what? You are right. If I was an actor, if I was the star and co-producer of this movie, I would also insist on a love scene with you Russell Crowe. could take out a couple of the shootings for that. Because there's a lot of shooting going yes. on in this movie. And a lot of people being killed that we really like or we have some empathy for. Yeah. So it would have. But but at the same time, that would make it more basic. Um, instinct. No. Yeah. It would just make it. Yeah. It would just. It would. It would kind of. Yeah. I mean, that's not what this. this that's not the story this movie is telling. Yes. She's not a sexual creature, even though she wakes up in Leonardo DiCaprio's bed. Um. But she she just got drunk the night before, and then she makes fun of him for throwing up. Yeah, I don't think so they, drunk. Yeah, they didn't actually do anything. I guess they didn't hook up. I mean, I think, but that's when they're like, "Oh, I have dynamite under my bed." Like, oh, I wonder if that's going to come into the story <laughs> later. I'm sure that means nothing. Do to do, do to do. I think she looks great. Yeah, I think she's. I I like her character. I like the arc, you know, it's, I, I'm a petty bitch. I love some vengeful stuff. I like a person with a purpose. Yes. You know, achieving, um, you know, it's, it, for me, 
I just, I found myself, my attention wandering sometimes. Mm. It felt a little repetitive. That's just for me. Yeah. But Criterion's doing a bunch of movies that are about women in cowboy movies. Yeah. And it's, it's essential to have it in that group. I mean, I think, yeah, it was dumped in like February of 95. Like yes. February and March are dumping seasons for movies. They just n- normally, I mean, Silence of the Lambs, I think, was released around that yeah. time. But for the most part, that's usually when they don't, you know, that's this when they're movie, not that super yeah. hyped on it. This movie came out the same time. time. Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Billy Matt. Uh, it did it again. Hold on. Yeah. Um, there we go. Weird. Billy Madison came out the same weekend um, and beat it at the box office. So, talk about, by the way, I like Billy Madison very much. But yeah, um, it's fine. I I think this movie has aged pretty well. Um, I think women might enjoy it more now than they did at the time. I think, yeah, I think she looks great. Yeah. I And I do like her arc. And I think it's it looks great. Like I said, the, uh, the the set design is great. The art direction is amazing. I mean, it moves pretty well. I just, like I said, I found it a little, like, for some reason, what is the movie I'm thinking of that I love? Um, Tombstone. Oh, yes. It's no Tombstone. Like, it's like, it, it it's far, like, Tombstone is kind of like what I want for my Western now. That's like my top choice. We have done an episode on Tombstone with Adam Risky. We need to have Adam back. And yeah. I I love me some tombstone as well. So I hear what yeah. you're saying. Like there's there's some dark shit in this one and it can be it can be a, a slog in those parts. Um, it's a tough slog sometimes, but yes. that's but that's not the movie that Sam Raimi is making. It's not the movie Sharon Stone is making. They're yeah. doing a Clint, East, Clint Eastwood spaghetti western over with yes. a, with modern photography and I think it looks great and it sounds great. And yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen it before and you like Westerns, give it a shot. If you like Sam Raimi movies and he's done very different kinds of movies. Yes. He's, and so, yeah. Yeah. I, I really like this one. So I give it, we get, I give it thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. It's a thumbs up for me. I thought Not way up as Cisco <laughs> would say, but yours is way up. Mine's way up. I thought this would, well, this is a great, uh, segue into I thought maybe we would like a list of other westerns that came out in the 90s yes please okay obviously Tombstone obviously is on that list and and that's a, a really great one uh, Young Guns 2 not as good as Young Guns <laughs> but yeah I think Young Guns is on our list but it wasn't streaming for a while so if when it's streaming again maybe we'll do it uh, next year or something. Unforgiven. Great movie. Unforgiven is great. Posse. Have you seen Posse with Mario Van Peebles? Oh, I think I did. I remember liking it at the time. Yeah. Uh, Bad Girls. Oh, yes. <laughs> snicker, yes. snicker, snicker. That played at my theater. Um, it's another one where I was like, well, that was fun. But I have not watched it again since I saw it in the theater. So it's had a, it was Andy McDowell, right? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Uh, uh, Madeline Stone. Y- Madeline Stowe, yeah. Oh, Madeline Stowe, Stowe was me. in everything in the 90s. Yeah, beautiful lady. She was beautiful. Okay, other movies. Wyatt Earp. I don't like Wyatt Earp. It's too long. It's very long. I should watch it. I, I, I bet if I watched it now at home... With the subtitles on, I might like it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, Patrick from F This Movie said he likes this book better than Tombstone. He's wrong, but he's okay. That's that's his opinion. You said he was wrong? Is that what you said? No. Okay. Wrong. Uh, other movies. Maverick. Yeah. 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 Uh, Wild Bill. Do you remember I that don't one? know that one. It no, has Jeff, that? It's what it's about Wild Bill Hick- Hickok and it's with Jeff Bridges. No, sorry. Okay, a few more. The Postman. Is that Kevin Costner? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's not good. It's not good. And then we have the Wild Wild West. <laughs> not good. <laughs> not good. 
<laughs> there were a couple of other ones too, but I wanted to keep it to, to 10. So. Do you want to hear the top movies for night? I'm sorry. Top albums for 1995. Ooh, the albums. Because we've yeah. done a few episodes now. They're like, late 1994 early 1995 yeah. so it was the same list yeah so these are the top 10 cds probably in 1995 okay i'm into it uh number 10 the lion king soundtrack shit that played at my theater that movie played at my theater for over a year yeah th they used to do that yeah uh number nine this is gonna blow your mind uh kenny g the miracles of the holiday <laughs> Kenny G had a bigger album than Nirvana in 1995. <laughs> MTV Unplugged, number 14. This was number nine. Look, moms need to listen to music, too. You, Kenny G, you could not escape in the mid-90s. This is true. Kenny, everywhere. They played him everywhere. Uh, did I ever tell you the story about going to see Kenny G in concert? Yeah, tell me. Um, so my best friend, Amanda, her mother wanted to do something nice for us. And so she bought us all tickets to go see Kenny G and Michael Bolton. And we weren't into either of those things, but they were very popular at the time. So she assumed that we were. <laughs> so we went and we were sitting on the grass. I saw Michael Bolton. I instantly fell asleep by the time Kenny G started. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't make it through the first song. Like, I remember him coming out and I was like, huh. <laughs> Where was this? At the Shoreline Amphitheater. Oh, the Shoreline's a great place to nap. Yeah, it, uh, it if is, you're on the is... lawn. Like, yeah. Amanda said, she's like, you were out. Like, I missed, all like, they woke me up when the show was over. Like, <laughs> And then it takes you hours to get home, so at yes. least you're rested. You can drive. Yeah, very true. Very true. Number eight, the band Live, Throwing Copper. Oh, my God. God. I love that. I was super into them. That's the one with, like, I Alone and Lightning Crashes. Yes. yes, I was super into it. Number seven, Green Day, Dookie. Loved it. I was. You couldn't get away from that one. I was super into nope. that one, too. Number six, Pearl Jam, Vitology. I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. Yes. Uh, number five, oh, one of the best of all time, TLC, Crazy, Sexy, Cool. I absolutely had this and listened to it all the time because it had uh, Creep on it, which I love. And it waterfalls. had um, Waterfalls and it had um, the one about the red light. It was like red light special. Oh, it was a jam. Number four. I know this one. I saw this at the Shoreline Amphitheater, by the way. The Eagles, Hell Freezes Over. I didn't sleep. That was a great show. I loved the Eagles. Love. Number three, Boys to Men, the album. Two. That's what it's called. <laughs> that one is probably the same. The one that had like the like, I'll make love to you. And uh, oh, you. it's so hard to, to say, say goodbye, goodbye to, to yesterday. yesterday. Sorry, everybody. Number two. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I did not. My mother played this to the point we were all going to take her hostage. Like Garth Brooks, the hits. Or Garth Dude, Brooks in the 90s. Garth oh my Brooks God. was. I didn't listen to country music. And even I knew I knew Garth Brooks songs and I didn't listen to country. You couldn't get away from them. Like Thunder Rolls and I got friends in low places. Low places. <laughs> I will tell you, he's one of the best concerts you will go to. No he, doubt. I heard that they're I amazing. I loved it. Yeah, he was amazing. Uh, number one, the number one album of 1995. <laughs> Cracked Rear View. Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk about it. I couldn't go anywhere on my college campus without hearing Hootie and the Blowfish songs. No, I, I moved to New York that year. It was everywhere. Everywhere was hold my hand, let her cry. Like time. all time, time, all of them, all all the time. I only want to be with you. All everywhere, every 
like anytime I walked by the way I didn't go to like frat parties because I was a dork um but if you walk by they were all playing that shit they were all playing yeah. Hootie and the Blowfish by the way he has a lovely voice it's just he has a great voice yeah. yeah I like his voice he um yeah so That's there's 1995 that. for you all right what else are you dorking out about my friend uh, they just finished the morning show. They had their season finale. And? Bad shit crazy season. Your favorite. It was my favorite <laughs> kind. It was really, really good. I loved it. I'll probably watch it again. Um, on Max. 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 They have the Gilded Age, which also I super love. Um, on Netflix, they had the documentary Twin Flames yes. that I was watching. You told me. I think I'm going to give up on that one because. It's making me so angry because Sorry, just I, MLMs and people being yeah, ripped off. It oh is. It, it is. It's all about taking advantage of people. That's all it is. And it, everyone loves to pretend they're too smart to be taken advantage of. And none of us are. That's the yeah. thing that gets to me. I watched the right. whole thing. It just makes me mad again because it's the same. It's. It's the same of a lot of the documentaries about this sort of thing where it's an MLM that they then try to pretend it's literally a fucking religion again so they right. don't have to pay taxes and they like really, really hurt people. Like it's yeah. they don't just take take they're not just taking money in this one. They're like they're fucking up people's lives. And, you know, um, it's it's a it's really fucked up. There's one on Amazon prime as well that has some other stories that, so if you are like super into it and want to watch both, there's, they're pretty complimentary. There's not too much repeating. So. Well, it's about couples and how to have like an intense it's, yeah. personal it's, relationship with somebody, which, you know, people are lonely and yeah. everyone wants to find that special someone and to, to make and to take advantage of people in the pursuit of that. Yeah. It's just, it's so fucked up and gross. And it's just, if you've ever been just been taken advantage of in your life yeah. or somebody really lied to you and betrayed you and just treat you like you weren't really a person, it's, it's so upsetting and it's to just watch upsetting. people do it over again. It's just, but yeah, I mean, it's good to know these things because it's good to like recognize things yeah. when they show themselves. So, that's a thing. Um, the Great British Bake Off, great this week. So I was sad good. about the person who was left. I know. I liked her so much, but <sighs> that's the show. I know. Well, this is when it gets really, really hard. Yeah. Because we're all attached to these people now. Um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. <laughs> so fucking crazy. Delivering like dominoes. It's amazing. It's great. It's that shit crazy. I I was laughing out loud at like Whitney's trying to have an event for her jewelry line because someone on every one of these Real Housewives shows has a jewelry line. I think two people have jewelry on this on this show on Salt it's Lake City. Jewelry, candles. Yes. There's like a few different things they do. Yes. Yeah. So she's trying to have an event and they're doing like a sound bath. And two of the women are just losing their shit on each other. And like everyone can hear it because everyone else is being quiet to listen to the sound bath. And they're like children in the back, just like, and literally like this bitch, Angie, who I don't like, is like standing in between them. And I'm like, you're making me feel sorry for Angie. I, Angie's annoying as fuck. And now I'm like, poor Angie, stuck between these two crazy bitches as they like and lash the, out at each other. And there's the, the whole Mormon religion is under is an underscore of everything. Yes. And that's its own level of stuff. I'm not going to get into that now. But there's two women. There's one woman that left the church and she was in Mormon royalty. Yes. That's Heather Gay. And then there's Lisa Barlow, whose son is going to go on a mission for two years. And then there's the whole thing that in – supposedly – I'm not an expert, obviously. But supposedly, the higher you are in the church, the better of an assignment you'll get. Mm. So when Heather was a good Mormon, she, she has a book called Bad Mormon that she wrote. <laughs> 
when she was young, she was sent to like the south of France. Yes. And she so she learned French and she converted a whole shitload of people because she's a really good salesperson. Yes. Which is what she details in her book. And so Heather went to someplace like Chic and Lisa Barlow's son is going to Colombia, which is Bogota. Is he going to Bogota? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Which is great. But I mean, it's just. You could tell that Lisa wished he was going to like Milan, someplace where she can do a lot of hardcore shopping. Yeah, she, a place she wants to visit. Right. So they're, they have their own thing. But then Heather runs a beauty salon where they sell, you can get a membership and you can get your fillers and your lip injections and your Botox and all that crap. Yes. And there's someone on the show who apparently signed up for services and then didn't pay for them, like, and owes oh, them money. Shit. And one of those people's already, turns out they're already on the show. And they didn't reveal themselves. And so they, because they use different names, because they have terrible credit. And it's a whole thing. And it's just amazing. I have to say, it's just amazing television. This season always, yes. always delivers. Like, they're all just, I mean, they are just high drama. They make questionable choices. <laughs> like they are bena- There's so much going on. Yes. And then when you dig deeper, you're like, there's just so much even going on beyond that. And it's just amazing. Yes. And then uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It's it's still fine. It's not as fun as Salt Lake City, but it's still got its own stuff. And one of their stuff was that the women went to Las Vegas to Vegas. Yes. Just to, to for someone's birthday. And Sutton, who's the Southern Belle, who's like very proper who really, they go to the Magic Mike show and the Magic mm -hmm. Mike show, they say, don't, if you're going to go on stage, if they pick you and you go on stage, you want to wear pants because you might have a wardrobe malfunction (laughs) because they pull up your dress. Oh my gosh. So this woman, Sutton, purposely wore pants so they would pick her and then had a stack of $1 bills and they didn't pick her. (laughs) So then she walked out in a huff. I pretended he was offended by the whole thing. It's really great. I can I I, I can't explain it any better than that. It's just the it's the hilarious. level of delusion these yes. women live in. I'm special. Is, they is will amazing. definitely pick me. In my terribly ill fitting white pants and my stack of one dollar bills. Yes. By the way, are you kidding me, ma'am? But ma'am, that's a whole thing. That's but I anyway. It's I'm I'm enjoying it all and below deck and all my other usual crap. Yes, and if. Y'all have the Peacock channel. They're showing some things from BravoCon on the on the Peacock channel that are also very entertaining. Uh, I watched the one about Vanderpump Rules because, of course, I did. And by the way, a show I've barely watched. <laughs> yeah, same. I know the characters. I know the plot. Yeah. I've never watched it either, but I think I you know understand like, oh, Jack's bad. You know, Tom's are bad. Yes, yeah, exactly. I, I joined that one during Scandaval last season because everyone and their brother was like, girl, you should be watching this. <laughs> it's right up your alley. And they are right. So I I watched the one on Peacock and it's very entertaining. I've been seeing all the clips on social media of all the different housewife ones. And it's Bravo. They, they, they tend to understand the assignment. So yeah, I appreciate that about them. Did they do a, did they do a panel for, below deck down under they did a below deck one in general Mm. so so jason was there aisha was there yeah yeah because i also i read the article in vanity fair about like some of the real housewives like bethany and leah and um ebony and how they were talking about like they want to form like a reality show union and then they the article goes into like all these things that bravo has done wrong like and how they like fill people up with booze and do this and that and i thought it was interesting that there was absolutely nothing in the article about below deck down under which i thought was an example of how you can do it right Well, I think they were clearly looking to just do something, you know, salacious. It was clickbait. But all those stories have been told before. Mm, Okay. And and Bethany is somebody who 
really craves the spotlight and literally can't be without it. So she was in Real Housewives of New York. Yeah. She, if you heard of Skinny Girl Margaritas, she was the inventor of that. And then she made all these Skinny Girl products from that, like jeans. Yeah. She had like lunch meat, like Skinny Girl bologna. Like <laughs> it's been, it's bananas. And she leaves. Skinny Girl bananas. <laughs> Skinny girl bananas. Like she leaves and she comes back and she leaves and she comes back. And she's somebody that's like on TikTok and she's engaged to, supposed to be engaged to someone who lives in Boston. And she moves with her daughter to Boston. It took her 10 years to divorce her husband, mm. who she also did a show with for three or four years. So it was all Bethany gets married. Oh, yeah. And then she lives in Boston with this guy, but she does these series of TikToks where she tries makeup yes and she picks makeup brands that are supposed to be available like just anywhere they're not supposed to be like super special she she's such a ridiculous person like she did an hbo max show when it was hbo max where she was a reality show where you were earning the right to work for her and be like her social media person where she swears i don't know social media and it's like you're one of the first people i followed on twitter like you're ridiculously lying like right from the start but she goes on tiktok and she will like just put on lip glosses and and all these kinds of things and decide whether or not she likes them. And she speaks in a really fast, you know, fast mm-hmm. pace slash manic kind of manner. Mm-hmm. And then there was a whole thing about her a few months ago. Well, when she was doing this whole reality reckoning, she went to a TJ Maxx in Long Island and she delivered a bunch of stuff that she just dis- just didn't use like she looked at and she didn't use them Mm -hmm. and they were in plastic bags like sandwich bags and she finds a woman that's at the register she goes this is my friend i see her all the time and she loves everything i buy here she goes hey what's your name and the one's like uh consuela it's like consuela i brought you all this stuff and she gave this woman a huge bag Of all these products, she never, she claimed she never touched, but they're all opened. Mm. They're not in the original packaging, but she had this look on her face. Like I am doing you an amazing favor right now. I'm giving you you, all my crap. Do you want my garbage? Here's my garbage. My face. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, like, are here's my leftovers. Are you, you're welcome for my leftovers. She's insane she has a video where she and she's very very thin yeah like that's like part of her brand and she had a video where she's like i wanted frozen yogurt but i didn't want to go to the frozen yogurt shop so i put yogurt in the freezer and then i took it out and it's like frozen yogurt and then i put some chocolate chips in there and she's like she's super manic as she does these things and it's like she has a teenage daughter and mm. it's like what is going on here anyway you know, she was dying when she saw Peacock because she was like, I wanted to be there at BravoCon, but she yes. has a reality reckoning. That I'm sorry, Sonia. That's like a long way of no. saying she's a cuckoo. She she's is cuckoo. a kook. She is a And you cuckoo. find her on TikTok. Her videos, it's a B-E-F-E-N-Y. Like she spells it kind of differently. Yes. And she just, there are just these manic videos. And then there are people who make fun of her videos, which is the fun <laughs> stuff. I'll, like, find, oh I'll just I'll find I those. Got this kind of cheese. I got the kind of cheese. I'm gonna put it on some crackers. Have you done this? Have you done this? <laughs> Have you tried eating? <laughs> Eating's amazing. She does that though. You know, it's just like this lip gloss. Oh my god, go put it all over my lips. And she, her lips are just injected, like you could tell. It's just <laughs> like, what is wrong with I don't know. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm like, I do feel better when I'm <laughs> because I'm not you. <laughs> She is a kook. She is a kook. Oh, I wanted to mention, I saw Priscilla the other day. <gasps> Wait, you didn't tell me. I didn't tell you this. So I went no. I went to the Alamo Draft House with my friend Fred. Hi, Fred. And we saw Priscilla. I think it's really, really good. Like, it's, it's, it's very different than, say, if you saw, like, the Elvis movie. Was that last year? You know, it's, it's Sofia Coppola. So it's got that Sofia Coppola aesthetic to it. Um, It is based on Priscilla Presley's book, Elvis and Me, right? I think that's what it was called. We did an episode on uh, book versus movie. I will be re-releasing it very soon. Nice. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Nice. Um, It's very interesting because I don't think a lot of people know just how young Priscilla was. 14. 14 when she met Elvis. And 
nobody around Elvis was telling him, hey, you're being gross. Like, this is actually illegal what you're doing. You know, nobody was saying that. So in the movie, nobody's saying that. But Sofia Coppola is making making it very clear without saying it out loud that this is problematic as fuck. Like, so she casts this woman, Kaylee Spani, to play Priscilla Presley. And she looks like a little girl compared to the man playing Elvis. It's Jacob El Lordi, I think is how you pronounce it. He does a great job as Elvis, by the way. Like, everyone loved Austin Butler as Elvis in the movie last mm-hmm. year and he was really good too. I think this guy is just as good. Like he looks like Elvis, he sounds like Elvis. He's not doing like all the performing that you, you know, it this is like Elvis behind the scenes if you will. But like he's mm-hmm. a gro- he's a groomer. He he grooms her. He grooms his parents. Like he takes her from her home at 14 and she moves into Graceland. And she's still going to high school. She's going to like a nearby Catholic school and she's like living with Elvis. We did an episode on what a creep about Elvis, by the way. Yeah, it's it's really icky. And you see like how nobody around there was like really looking out for her. You know, right. for her to for this to happen, even her own parents weren't really looking out for her. And after the movie was over, Fred's like, I wonder if this was by design, but Priscilla as a character in the movie didn't have a lot of personality. He's like, I felt like I didn't understand her that much until later in the movie. And I kind of think it is by design. I think that she's just a little she's just a girl and she's trying to be whatever Elvis wants her to be. Right. And she didn't really find herself until yes. she was much older. And then a super fucked up thing. And we talked about it in our episode. I don't know if that's behind our Patreon wall or not. But there's a book that came out in the 90s. And it was a, a woman. I can't remember the name of the author. I'm sorry. But um, look at our show notes from that episode. But she interviewed Priscilla. And then Priscilla was, I don't know if they show this in the movie, but she said she was assaulted by one of Elvis's minions, like going to visit him in Germany. I don't know. Did she, did they show that? No, they didn't show that in this movie. So in the, in what happened was there was a guy that was in charge of driving her from the base in Germany yes. to Elvis's apartment. Okay, that, that care, that person is in the movie, but the, uh, the assault is not. Yeah. He, she said at one time he tried to assault her. And that was in Elvis and me. And then years later, like 10 years later, say like 95, 96, this book comes out. And this person, this woman had Priscilla come to her apartment to do an interview. And she had that guy there (gasps) and he was saying it never happened. It was like (gasps) confronting her. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. up. So fucked up. It's so fucked up. I mean, we would never do that now. No, but like, like talk about 1995 like the mid 90s like women's voices women were questioned you know for for she was questioned for even saying that and i well i was wondering that yeah yeah and then like i'm curious what if this movie would be different if it came out even a year from now because i think priscilla has been pretty like she had a daughter with with Elvis. So like, I think she took Lisa Marie's feelings into consideration. Probably I'm assuming when she wrote this book, I think that Lisa Marie's feelings came into play a little bit in this movie. Like I heard that Lisa Marie didn't like the movie. She said that like, she thought Elvis was like, a creep. Yeah. Portrayed as a creep. And like, Sophia Coppola is like, I'm trying to like, do justice to your mom's story and Priscilla was involved in the movie so I wonder if the movie would even be more harsh on Elvis if it came out next year I wonder I wonder yeah because unfortunately Lisa Marie passed yes which is so I mean can't believe that she's so so young it's terribly sad but she passed away this past March or April yeah um yeah I mean there's it's so multi-layered and then as we were talking about Um, One Tree Hill and our What a Creep episode and like there's terrible things that can happen to you and at the same time it's amazing like 
you know, terrible and awful and wonderful can all happen at the same time. And your brain just tries to figure it all out. Yes. And she's never married after Elvis. Like she's been in long term relationships, but she never married again. You could honestly seeing this movie. I see why she didn't because she probably had an idea of what marriage is and was like, yeah, no, thanks. No, that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's. It's not good. Let's just say that. But the, I think the movie is good. It looks like a Sofia Coppola movie. Like, you know, people talk about like Wes Anderson and he has a certain kind of aesthetic and most people seem to be fine with that. But then they kind of criticize Sofia Coppola for having a similar like she has an aesthetic to her movies, I think. And when and then people are like, well, I don't like it because it looks like and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I have thoughts and feelings about that. But I think it it looks great. I think everybody in it is really good. I think it's telling a very interesting story. It's pretty like, and then this happened and then this happened and this happened, you know, um, but it it is saying, look at this fucking creep, basically. Well, I mean, do they explain that his mother died like pretty? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And his father got remarried like just a few months later. That was, part, I yeah. don't remember if any of that is in the movie, but there is a thing about like Elvis's dad is around. Um, there are references to the colonel, but we don't see the colonel. Um, yeah, he sucks. We yeah. did an episode about him too. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't spend like a lot of time going through like Elvis's greatest hits, you know, where it's like, and then he made this movie and then he made this record. Um, it's really about her and his relationship with her and things like that. But it is pointing out that he is a creep without explicitly saying he's a creep. Just, I mean, just with the casting alone with her looking so incredibly young compared to him, like the, she looks so little compared to him. Yeah. The, the, the makeover stuff with like the hair and the makeup And when she likes a dress that he doesn't like, he loses his shit. You know, there's a lot of stuff like that. So I think it's really well done. I recommend it. I'm sure if you don't want to go to Alamo, I'm sure it's going to be streaming and within a month because everything is. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably see it in streaming, but yeah, I, you know me, I I like a lot of, I'm into the Elvis lore. Yes. You know, and, and I was, uh, but I, I, and I, I do love Sofia Coppola. I think like, Especially visually. I just think she's so interesting. Yeah. I recently, I had never seen Marie Antoinette. And I watched a good movie. And I watched it this week. And um, I was like, oh, shit, this Marie Antoinette walked so Bridgerton could run. (laughs) Like, totally. I get it now. Like, there are some very, like, modern things in that movie. I really like that movie. I Again, I think that movie was pretty divisive. But... I liked what I saw. I thought it was good. And it visually, it's beautiful. And the clothes are yeah. amazing and the hair and all this. Stuff. I was into it. So, and I recently rewatched The Virgin Suicides as well. And that movie is just like a punch in the gut and also visually stunning. Yeah. She's hot take, everybody. Sophia Coppola is really good. <laughs> She's talented, y'all. Well, Check her out. Weird. Now, you probably never heard of her before, but she's really good. My friend, where can they find you on the internet? It's either at Brooklyn Margo or Brooklyn Fit Chick. So that's for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Blue Sky, Threads. Um, my TikTok is at Brooklyn Margo, and I have the trailer for The Quick and the Dead there yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. So follow me at all those places follow her on the things y'all she has a very exciting book that she's in the works and you'll you'll want sneak peeks you'll find out you'll find Sooner out enough, Sony, Sony is a behind the scenes she understands the drama I that do. I've been going through I do I am I'm in the know if you like the sound of our voices, we also co-host a podcast called What a Creep, where we talk about creeps of the past and the present. Our current creep is, oh, well, you just mentioned it. We talk about the creator of One Tree Hill. He sucks. So please take a listen. We had a really good non-creep at the end. I think it's a good episode. You did a good job yeah. on that, Margo. You did a good job, Sonia. Well, thank you, friend. You can find me at The Sonia Show on all the things. I have my own website, thesoniashow.com, and it's like Twitter, Instagram, mainly Blue Sky, more than Twitter, 
TikTok, all the things. You can find Dorking Out at dorkingoutshow.com. We have a new website. Wee! And you can also find us on Blue Sky Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the places. Thanks the for places. T- Send us your, suge- your suggestions. Yes, we take requests. Last week we did uh, Legends of the Fall. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't know why I'm going to laugh every time I mention it. Maybe because it was a very fun episode. That was a request. Now, we may not like the movie as much as you, but we will talk about it. So please send us your requests. And we have stickers. So you can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail.com and we'll send you stickers if you um, are kind enough to give us your address. And again, we take requests. So please send them our way. And thanks for talking about this, my friend. I really appreciate it. I love this movie. It's so fun. This was really good, and uh, I'm going to go now on eBay and see if I can find those pants. 